Hi there. I'm here today to talk to you about school-wide implementation for your MVP program. I have a slideshow here to share with you today. A little background about me. My name is Jenny Wagner and there's my email address. I would normally have an office phone to share with you, but we are not in our buildings until at least January. So I'm presenting from home today. I work at Kennedy High School as our at-risk interventionist with grades 10 through 12. Our journey at Kennedy with MVP started in 2016. We had a national trainers, we had Allen there for us. We had some community local leaders, and then obviously our school leaders and our school teams. Uh, the school year of 2016 and 17, we met once a week with our planning team and talked about our implementation for the following year. So in fall of 2017, we officially started MVP with homeroom sessions. And I am talking to you today as a member of our MVP statewide technical assistance team. As I thought about the presentation I would want to share, I tried to really organize in the most efficient way five key things when building your implementation plan. I would like to talk with you about building based staff leadership team, your delivery model, identifying your student mentor team, establishing and organizing your training opportunities and materials, and then finally your staff and family notification. For your building-based staff leadership team, I would encourage you to think about your administration, your counseling team, your support staff, and your instructional staff. Look at everyone that you have available and really think about who would be personally connected and invested in this effort. We all know typically who are the people that will join committees and join initiatives, but in a time where our schools are so saturated with programs, I'd really encourage you to find the people who will care about the program and want to see it to success. When you've got four to five, six people found to build your team, I would think about establishing a lead facilitator, somebody who's the most organized maybe, or the most passionate, anyone who will step into that role of really guiding your team in conversation. Next, think about your planning schedule. Do you want to get together with your team after school, before school? Do you have to do it virtually? Is it once a week for just a few 10, 15 minutes? Or do you want a longer one to two hours um, just once a month? So think about what fits into your schedule for your team to begin implementation. After you've got the people, and you've got the time and place where you're going to meet, think about how you can bring in district leadership. Maybe somebody on a counseling position or your school wellness. Is there anyone at the district level who can provide guidance, resources, and brainstorming with you from a broader perspective? Also think about, are there other high schools in your community or surrounding towns who want to implement MVP and how can you share ideas? It's really great and it just kind of provides support and encouragement if you can work with more people, more perspectives in building your program. Finally, make sure everyone has the MVP training materials, whether it's your PowerPoints from training or materials, curriculum, exercises, lesson plans, make sure everyone has access so that they can have that fundamental understanding of MVP as you move forward into your own building. When you're talking with your team now, I would like you to think about when will you have your MVP sessions, where will they occur, and who do they involve? So when you're thinking about when, think about your school calendar for the whole year. Do you want them once a week, once every other week, twice a month back to back? Think about long-term planning, where do they fit into your school calendar? The next component of when is where in your class schedule during the day does it most naturally, most conveniently fit into your class schedule? 
Do you have any advisory or homeroom time built into the day? Do you have an extended learning portion of your day? Anything that can fit into the school day or where is MPP going to occur? So after you've got some of those basic scheduling pieces done, where will this happen? Will it happen in a homeroom setting or in a content class? Just where do you see that fitting in with the classroom? And then finally, who? Who is your targeted population of mentees? Are you looking for freshmen to receive the program? Are you looking for freshmen and sophomores to receive the program? Who is your audience? The next thing to think about is who will be supervising or observing those MVP lessons? Who will be in the classroom to sort of ensure protocol is followed, classroom management basics? The staff is not there to lead the conversation or lead the lesson. They're simply there as, as an observer, but you want to make sure that you've got an adult in the room who can help. So after you've got your staff leadership team, start thinking about your student mentor team, the upperclassmen who will be acting as your MVP mentors. Think about what is the ideal candidate criteria? What are the characteristics or qualities of someone who you believe would be a great mentor? Typically, we have, you know, those top leaders who sign up for a lot of things that take a lot of initiative. They are the leaders, the captains on our athletic, athletic, academic, or performing arts teams. They really want to get involved. So certainly you'll have that population to pull from, but we take seriously the MVP guidance to have your mentor team have a diverse, rich, fair representation of your student body. So really think, how can you pull out those leaders who might not see themselves as leaders? How can you get them to connect with MVP and come forward? You'll have an application process where students have to answer some questions related to gender-based norms or stereotypes or bystander intervention, violence prevention. And one key component on your application is that you have a section for parent permission. This program is new for schools and for communities, so you'll want to make sure you've explicitly stated what the content and objective is of this program and getting parent consent so their student can participate. When you have the application ready, you'll want to ask staff who they would recommend as leaders in this program. Have them look at their rosters, have them send you names or maybe provide them with applications and they can give that to students, but really work with your staff because they know the students and they can make sure that you have found people who will be personally invested in, in leaders for your team if they didn't already see themselves like that. Finally, think about the timeline that you have for the application process. If you have a training in April, you'll want to back up so many weeks and a timeline that you get the applications out and you let people have them circulating for a couple weeks until you have your due date so that you have time to get them back, read through the applications, and then begin your training. So again, think about the criteria of a great mentor build an application that includes parent consent, and then start drafting your timeline on when that process should begin. So once you've got your team, think about how you wanna get them trained. You're going to need materials, so the MVP curriculum, the lesson plans, the exercises. Think about putting all those paper copies together in a binder and getting everything really organized. However, we know that students often lose paper copies of things or they might show up to their MVP session and forgot their binder at home. So it's always a good idea to have a website with the schedule, the internet links, the documents, the exercises and curriculum available electronically. For the first couple of years, I used Canvas and then this last couple, I had a Google site that I built that kept all of our papers on there. So if you can get ready for your training, provide both a paper copy of everything and have it organized in an electronic way for students to access all year. All right, so the second part of your training 
is to think about a location, maybe like a training retreat or a training day off campus or on campus. Maybe it's a half day, maybe it's a full day, maybe it's a couple hours for a month after school. Maybe you have to do it in the summer, but think about how can you provide your mentors the opportunity with in-depth comprehensive training in MVP. Build up a schedule, maybe invite a guest speaker from within your school or in the community who's related to violence prevention, and then think about logistics. How will you get students there? Do you need to feed them? Do you need to pay a reservation fee? Do you need to clear their attendance? Do you need to get homework in advance? So think about what training will look like for your mentors. Finally, we need to inform and involve our staff and families. So for sure, the staff who will be in the classroom need to know what MVP is. They need to see the model. They need to see the structure of a lesson. They need to know why we are having this program and what the conversation will be like. We know that students talk about societal norms and gender-based violence. We know students are seeing things that they don't know how to handle. So these conversations are happening in private. And this is one of the first times that we're having real organized conversation out in the open with this topic. So make sure your staff knows what's going on. Give them the observation checklist if they're going to be in a MVP session. That observation checklist equips your staff to know what protocol and what essential elements should be present in a lesson to make sure that your mentors have a little bit of a quality check that they're following the program they need to do. It also provides your staff a consistent formal way to give feedback like, hey, this lesson didn't really work. The questions didn't really match the conversation or the videos are not working. The links are old. It helps give your staff just a way to engage with the program and share with you how they feel it's going. I made the mistake of thinking that was an optional piece. And so after my first couple months of MVP, I was getting random emails from teachers sharing how they thought that it went or if they thought something did not go well. And I was really overwhelmed not having kind of a clear, consistent way to share how the lesson went. I didn't know how to just respond to emails. So having that observation checklist really gives it structure so teachers know what to look for and what to comment on. And then I always make a copy of that and give it to the mentors so they can have feedback too for the next time. Regarding your families, because this is a new program in your school, you'll want to make sure that your families have had a chance to be notified. We put a little paragraph in our student handbook every fall. We, of course, explain on the application what MVP is. So when a parent gives consent, at least that family is aware. And then we always involve our PTA or PTSA. As the parent-teacher organization, they are a very powerful resource and ally for coming alongside the program and seeing its value and place in our culture. Also, if other parents have questions and we are not there as the team to answer or give more information, a lot of times a member of PTA might be there. So they can just make sure that the accurate information regarding the program is out there and shared and accessible. So just trying to cover your bases in a lot of different avenues, a lot of different formats. So if I were to think about the things that I have learned in the last few years and the mistakes that I've made or the highs and lows, here are the tips I would like to share. My first tip for you would be when you're building your staff, building leadership team for MVP, find someone who is really organized. Your program will go year round. It involves teachers, it involves upperclassmen, and it will involve underclassmen. There's a lot of moving parts, a lot of scheduling and getting resources and materials ready. There's just a lot to manage. So make sure you have someone involved who can keep your team organized. My second tip would be to make sure that your building administration sincerely supports the program and sees how it can fit in your student culture. 
if you as a staff member really believes in MVP, but your admin is kind of disconnected and doesn't really think that it's appropriate, it will be really hard to get time and space and any traction in your implementation. So have some sincere, candid conversation with your admin about if it's the right time and fit and place for your school to begin your MVP journey. You'll need to make sure that it's a partnership with the team and the admin. My third tip is to build time and space to conduct this program with integrity. Again, we are saturated with initiatives and programs and obligations to our building and districts, but it is really important that you carve out time and space for MVP to exist. If you approach this program like it will fill in gaps when you don't know what to do, or maybe a homeroom session once a month that you didn't really have planned, it will feel very rushed and random. It will feel like your mentees and mentors are really struggling to build rapport and a trusting relationship. And a lot of times, if you just plan it month by month, your mentors will really struggle with knowing the content, knowing the lesson, and feeling confident. And when they are not feeling confident and they're not feeling prepared, that will affect the way the lesson goes to your mentees. So I really encourage you to commit to time and space for this program so that everyone can feel ready and prepared. My fourth tip is to not underestimate the support you'll have from staff. I was incredibly nervous bringing this to 100 staff. Again, we know the conversations happen. We had them with our friends as kids, but to organize it in a school setting and have it be in the hands of our upperclassmen is a scary thing. And I was really thinking that our staff would say, hey, I came here to teach content. I don't really want to navigate a bunch of freshmen talking about their behaviors. It's, it's scary, it's new, it's uncharted territory. But I tell you what, you will find so many staff who are thankful that the conversation is happening and that you are here to lead it. So just be patient and just trust the process. The conversation is definitely, you know, having its place in our schools now. And if we can just lead it and get it prepared with our staff and our mentors, you will be really encouraged and surprised by the staff of your coworkers. My final tip here is to embrace the highs and lows. So because it's a year round program, you know, it has a lot of different phases and a lot of uh, moments where you will finish the day thinking, wow, this is happening. MVP is actually happening in my building. The mentors are into it. The conversations are meaningful. We might have real impact at the end of the year. We are really having rapport with our students and maybe some behaviors and some thinking can be challenged. So there are days that you feel like on top of the mountain with the program. There are days that you wonder what the heck did you get started and why are you getting into it? So just know that like if your mentors don't show up to a session, if a freshman says something wrong that you're not sure how to handle, just trust that there are highs and lows with the program. It comes with a journey and just lean on people for support. Finally, I'm always here to help support anybody with their implementation. I know that I'm not on campus, but I'm still here available for you. So reach out anytime and I would love to assist with your implementation. I hope that you found this helpful and stay in touch.